So with this question, um, we're talking about bi genetic engineering and biotechnology. And this first one is um, a relatively uh, straightforward question um, where we have to outline a basic technique for gene transfer. So what we're doing here to, do, to just summarize is that we've got um, an organism A, let's uh, say it's like a snail. And then we want to take one of the genes from the snail and then we want to chuck it into a bacteria. Because it might produce like a, a good protein. So that's what we're aiming to do. Um, so there's both a host, which is the bacteria, and there's also a donor, which gives the gene over. So that's what we need to consider. Okay, so the first thing that we'll talk about is that um, the plasmid from the host, because we're not changing the DNA inside the nucleus, we're changing a plasmid on the side, which is like a, a ring of DNA. So plasmid from host cell is removed. So we've got this, uh, we've got this plasmid right now, which is like a circle. And what we now need to do is that we actually need to cut it. So we need to cut it open so that it springs open so that it's like this and we can put our extra gene inside here. The way that we cut it is using restriction enzymes. So restriction enzymes used to cut, um, to cut plasmid. Okay, so those are a few points about the host. Now I have to talk about the donor. So, um, so gene from donor is extracted. So in this case, it might be our snail. So we've got this uh, gene which comes on like a chromosome like this. And then so we've extracted this, but then our gene might only be a small part. It might be this like small blue part here. Um, so we need to cut that as well. We need to cut that out. And the way that we cut that out is using the same restriction enzyme. So the restriction enzyme, or well, the same restriction enzyme is used to cut target gene or target DNA. And what this results in is in sticky ends. And they, the IB loves sticky ends. So remember every time we talk about gene transfer over here, just think sticky ends. So results in sticky ends. And what they mean by sticky ends is that when you cut something, it's not, so say if we have our, if we zoom in onto this, uh, in, onto this chromosome, then what we'll see is we see DNA like this, right? And we have our different base pairs here. And what we'll have is that um, after we cut one of the strings of DNA is that it will continue like this. But then this, this section here, it might be say, in this case, it's one, two, three, four, five base pairs or base sequences long. The other side will be missing. So this will be free floating. It will be a single stranded sticky end. Single stranded sticky end, SE is for sticky end. And what happens here is that um, it doesn't like being single. They like being in pairs. So what happens is that um, anything which is complementary um, will bind via this, via complementary base pairing. And that's exactly what happens over here. So back to our answer. Um, so it results in sticky ends and then um, inserted into plasmid via complementary base pairing. Okay, so they actually stick together. So we've actually put this sequence of DNA, we've kind of done this, and then we've actually chucked it up over here, and we've put it into the plasmid over here. Right? So, the next thing, and we're getting very end of this medium question, um, is that they are uh, spliced together, so spliced together via DNA ligase. 
So ligase, remember ase, every time you see an ase, it's an enzyme. It's an enzyme which sticks things together. And then we now have this complete uh, or recombinant plasmid. Um, it's a recombinant plasmid which has our target gene in here. So recombinant plasmid formed. And then that recombinant plasmid is then inserted back into cell. Back into host bacterial cell. Okay. Good, so let's count up how many marks that we've got. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we've actually got nine marks for this six mark question. So we've actually got nine out of six, which is perfect. The next question is a bit longer. And uh, initially I really hated doing these questions, mainly because they talked about like the, the positives and the negatives and I always used to get confused. But this one's actually a good one to get some easy marks. So discuss the potential benefits and possible harmful effects of one example of genetic modification in a named organism. So there's three main parts here. We need to talk about the benefits, we need to talk about the harmful effects, and also name one example. So we're going to start off with naming the one example. And the one that they love using, they absolutely love using it, is uh, the, the use of herbicide um, resistant genes from salmonella uh, bacteria. And what they do is that they place those into, say, corn, and the corn becomes resistant to herbicide. So we, let's put that at the top here. So um, our named example, we can even write example here, is herbicide resistant corn from salmonella bacteria. That's our example. And what does it do? So it means that you can use crops, uh, not use crops rather, so you can use um, herbicides on these crops and they won't kill the crops themselves. They'll kill the weeds around them. So results in resistant, herbicide resistant crops okay so what are some of the benefits so the benefits are so because if you can use herbicides to kill off the weeds next to them then the naturally the the corn will grow at a faster rate because there's less competition so if it grows at a faster rate then the corn grown will be bigger and better so increased yield due to less competition that sounds brilliant and then what's um, a reason because this because of this what's a reason that this occurs um, it's because um, so weeds are killed off okay um, and another thing is, which is kind of almost like a, how do I, how do I explain it? So it's kind of almost like a extension of the first point is that, uh, weeds which are similar to the corn can be killed off. Corn can be killed off, which once again allows increased growth increase allows um, a greater crop yield okay so those are a couple of points um, which are the benefits and the, essentially the way that they market is that they want you to talk about one of the benefits and then give you more detail about it so explain exactly why uh, that occurs or why it is a benefit and those will actually give you one mark each so this will potentially give you four marks what we've done here so now let's talk about some of the negative effects so harmful effects And the first one is quite obvious. So if you have a gene that's been given to this corn, what happens if that gene escapes? It might be given to the weeds. And if you have weeds which are resistant to herbicides, then you, you know, you're done for. 
So gene may be transferred to weeds. And this results in results in super weeds. Kind of like Superman. Except they're super weeds. And this is bad because you can't control them. Which are uncontrollable. So moving on to the final point, um, another one of the things is that when you're um, adding in a gene to anything, if you add in anything, then it might be, it's different for what it usually is. And if humans consume it and they're not used to it, then they might be allergic. So humans may be allergic to gene, to herbicide resistance gene. Look, I guess what it comes down to is that there are a few points which you have to think about for the individual example. The final um, example that you can probably put down for any one of these questions is that um, it has unknown future effect. So every time, if you just are unsure what to put down, just say that there's, that they're also unsure, that they're unsure about what the future effect is. You're not sure what's going to happen in 50, 100 years time. We've hypothesized that the gene, that the genes might be um, transferred or that there might be um, allergies, but there also might be things that we haven't thought of. And that's a completely legitimate answer as well. So let's mark this now. So we'll get a mark for talking about what kind of gene it is. So we talk about, talked about a herbicide resistance gene. That's one mark. It's been transferred from salmonella um, to corn and um, the result of that is, is leading to herbicide resistance. So that's three points there. Talked about the benefits, we talked about a detail and then we gave a bit more information about it as well as here. Okay, And then finally we gave some information as well as more detail and then we gave another two examples of harmful effects. So all up we should have three here four here as well as four here which is 11 points which is fantastic um, as the maximum mark for this one should be about eight okay good there are plenty more youtube videos for you to check out just click on the links below if you'd like to download the questions as well as the answers make sure to like us on facebook first and finally if you'd like to find out how i got a seven in high level ib biology make sure to check out our website in the bottom right hand corner thanks